I think the most crucial thing in the first round or first two rounds is whether Aguayo can use his great ability as a body puncher, and many people think he's one of the greatest body punches there ever was, to slow up the charge of Aaron Pryor. Aaron Pryor has been known to charge out at the opening bell, round one. Pryor with the first punch, he scores with the right hand. Up tempo right from the opening bell. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if someone gets knocked down the first round. Pryor, perpetual motion, he is right on top of Arguello, who gets off the ropes. Crowd already starting to cheer. Arguello with a right hand that scores on Pryor, whose legs buckle for a moment. Pryor seems to be hurt. Alex went to the body and was able to hurt Pryor for a while. Which is exactly what Larry Merchant yeah. was just mentioning. Those uppercuts by Alex and that overhand right is very effective in Pryor's uh, style. Pryor is now slowed down just for the moment. Pryor has been knocked down. He will say, yes, I'll get knocked down and take a count of one, two, or three, but my opponent will get knocked down and take a count of eight, nine, or ten. And that has been the story. First round, uppercut the right hand and another left hand. Arguello against the ropes. A lot of action for the first round of a 15-round fight. Both fighters are a little tight. A right hand by Arguello. This is the first time that I ever seen Alice go at this pace in the early round. There's a right hand by Pryor and Arguello is hurt. Well, so far, the fight has been exactly as advertised. There's another right hand by Pryor, and another right hand, and another. And Arguello gets off the ropes. Alex is hurt seriously now. Arguello is letting Pryor fight his fight. And another right hand, and Arguello back to the ropes again. Arguello unable to keep Pryor off him early on. Alex that legs. Is a key. He started. He started to buckle, Barry. The crack can hop right on him now. He's straight to put Alex down. But he can't get too careless because Alex is a great champion. The other thing that I can't help but wonder is the bell here is not very loud, and this crowd is a din. That could be a factor because neither one of these fighters may hear the bell. Really puts the pressure on the referee. It's still the first round, remember. You know, both fighters are a little awkward in the very first round because they started off very fast at the beginning of the first round. Well, there weren't too many who expected this fight to go the difference, distance, rather, a left hand by Pryor again. And at this pace, there is simply no way that it can. A combination by Pryor and an uppercut. the round and what a first round. Yeah, take a look at some of those exchanges early on. He wasn't giving Aguayo a chance to breathe or to set himself to throw the punch. Aguayo likes to set himself to throw his punches. There you saw a left come right through Aguayo's guard and Aguayo was continually backing up. Here's another exchange later in the round. There you saw Two punches, three, a very good left hand. Aguayo is simply getting licked to the punch in a five punch exchange that Aaron landed on him. Another factor also is the fact that Pryor often misses shots. He did not miss many punches in that first round, and he scores his first three of this one. An uppercut sends Arguello reeling backward. This is Pryor's also much physically stronger than the other fighters that uh, Alex been in the ring with. And that left jab of Pryor is getting through. Pryor is very sharp with his punches. Not only a lot of them, but very effective. But both fighters are missing some shots, like those overhand rights. If either punch land from either fighter, someone has to go down. Both men were hurt in the first round prior early, but Arguello got much the worst of it. And again, prior getting off before Arguello. Arguello, a professional, and that is the thing that is constant 
When you hear anybody talk about Alexis Arguello, they say he's the consummate professional. Well, see, Pratt always punch himself out unnecessarily. He burned a lot of energy up. And another thing he, had, he must keep in mind, he can't stand straight up. That left hook by Arguello just land. Pratt can't afford to stand straight up because Arguello gets very good leverage. But inside, it should be Aaron Pratt all the way. Now, see, you'll see Aguayo, because Pryor was dazed from that overhand right. Pryor talking to Aguayo now. Pryor draws a warning for hooking. That punch by Arguello was just a case of his man making a mistake and Arguello countering the mistake. And that's what he says. His theory is all I have to do is throw two or three punches in the round, but they've got to be good and they've got to hurt. He's such a composed fighter. Arguello is such a composed fighter. He's been rocked by Pryor, but see, Pryor's mistake and uh, bad habits, the fact he burnt his stamina is not as great as it should be. Although he punches very, very hard for his division. Well, this fight so far is exactly as all the promotional releases have said. That's a rarity. I've seen it a couple of times, once in your fight with Tommy Hearns, but it is rare that a fight lives up to the press clippings. So far, this one has, albeit it is early. Arguello fighting off the ropes and fighting very effectively off the ropes. Arguello got the better of that exchange. But Pryor is still right on Arguello. And Arguello does seem content to have his back against the ropes and have Pryor lean on him. This is just the second round. Neither man is marked. <laughs> End of the second round. The word for the wear. Let's take a look at the right hand that Aguayo landed very early in that round. Here he is with his back to the ropes, a short, jolting left hand. Another one. And there it is, a straight right hand. A straight right hand right to the point of the chin. And interestingly enough, Aaron Pryor came right back after it. All right? You're the boss now, Jim. Give me a drink, man, I'll mix. One that I mix, loose the Mix up. Awesome, awesome. Uh, you're the boss now. Roll! Jab, 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 roll! All right? Jab to the head, all right? Under the body, up, up, go! Bring the truth, roll! Panama Lewis wants Pryor to move his head more and move his body more and not come in quite so straight to Aguayo. Well, he can't afford to, Larry, because, again, Alex gets such good leverage behind his punches, and his punch is so accurate. Pryor has to be very careful. Both fighters headhunting early on here. Aguayo oftentimes likes to go to the body. He's not done that against Pryor. Of course, it's tough against the shorter man who's all over you. That was just a push for which Pryor draws a bit of a warning. But Pryor must, I, I feel very, he must get uh, a bit out of there in the early rounds because the late rounds would definitely belong to Alex. It was a right hand by Arguello. It did not phase Aaron Pryor, who came back with a left hand of his own. Again, you can't emphasize enough, the crowd is very much pro Arguello. So when Arguello scores, you're going to hear it a lot more. Every time Pryor waits, sits and waits, Arguello comes in with that uh, uppercut and overhand right. And the same goes for Arguello. If he waits, Pryor comes on strong. The left jab in the face of Pryor thrown by Alexis Arguello. Pryor fighting a little bit more at long range this round. He's telegraphing, he's reaching. Aaron Pryor's starting to reach now. And it's very, very bad, you know, habit against a guy of Aguayo's caliber. Aguayo took a right hand from Pryor, mostly on the gloves, but it still forced him back into the ropes. Aguayo's straight right hand, or rather Pryor, a straight right hand, and I believe I see some blood from under the eye. And he took another shot right there. Although Price landing very well, he still doing a, he has a bad habit of coming straight in with his chin up. It is just a swelling and not a bleeding under the you eye. See what happened? The right hand. Aguero was able to catch Price that overhand right because Price straight up in front of him, 
And now I, I, I sense fatigue in Iron Pride. And you'll see Aguero just take control. And it's only the third round, and that short right hand, that was the punch that put Kevin Rooney away. He is not in there with Kevin Rooney tonight, but it was a good chopping right hand. I really believe that Pryor's Pryor starting to get a little arm wound. And Pryor playing with Aaron, with uh, Alexis Arguello here for a moment. I can't imagine really that Pryor could be arm weary, although he was fighting like it for just a moment there. There's a right hand by, Pry by Arguello. Well, Pryor has this funny way of uh, doing a lot of punches, then all of a sudden he plays around and gets him his rest, his second win. That was not a damaging punch by Arguello. Pryor backs off. And Those body shots of Arguello is taking a toll. End of the round, end of round three. Arguello off the stool and into the center of the ring. Arguello's corner, Eddie Futch telling him, don't wait on it. Exactly, that was the problem at first with uh, Arguello. He was waiting on Pryor, and Pryor shouldn't do the same. He shouldn't wait on ours. Pryor missed that uppercut and the right hand. I can't see this fight going over two past 10 rounds, but the pace these guys have set from the very first rounds, and the big blows that started to land. Combination by Pryor. a good right hand from Pryor, and Pryor now putting on the pressure on the ropes. It was only the right hand, though, that scored. The, push to, the, the combination to watch from Alex Aguilio is that under uh, left uppercut and overhand right, which has been very effective for Aaron Pryor in a particular punch because he's very strong and has a, carries a good punch in both, with both hands. And the jab now of Aguayo starting to tick off the face of Aaron Pryor. It's not damaging, but again, it's one of those things that over a period of time can wear a man down. That right hand caught Aguayo on the gloves, but he did score with an uppercut and another left hand. Aguayo back with the right hand of his own. I don't believe Pryor's hurt. I think he was fainting injury there. I do not believe he was hurt by that. You know, Aguayo threw some body shots in that third round, and I, I felt they were effective against Aaron Pryor. See, Pryor cannot do this, bro. He can't back up. Uh, Aguero gets too much uh, leverage and his presses his reach that he has. Aguero is, on, or is uh, marked with a swelling under the eye. It does not appear to be appreciably worse in this round. Pryor is unmarked. That was mostly on the gloves. These guys have been tremendous shape because they've both been landing big punches. Counter punch with the left hand by Arguello. And Pryor with a left hand of his own. Look, Aaron Pryor can throw punches from all languages. You know the way he bobs and weaves, throws it with the left hand, the right hand. He's capable of throwing punches from all angles. He becomes very difficult to hit, too, just with that head roll that he has. He just makes a very tough target. That was an overhand right at the bell. Alex Aguero thinking a lightweight champion's thoughts. You wonder what's going on inside that great old fighting head. The left hook by Arguello. Panama Lewis telling Pryor to double jab and come with the right. Another right hand by Arguello. I'm sure the way things look now, Alex Aguayo was instructed to pick the pace up and not to fall asleep on Pryor. And Pryor, on the other hand, was told, work that left jab, get inside. I would tend to agree with Larry. I don't really think there is any arm weariness on the part of Pryor. Both of them really seem to have their legs under them, too, and that, of course, is the real telltale. Well, they both now look really alert. Straight left hand jab, although Pryor has not doubled up on the jab as his corner exhorted him to do. There he did a double jab and a right hand. 
Iron Claw still making a mistake of falling man with his chin. And every time he do that, he can be tagged with an overhand right. Aguayo fighting as though he is fighting a controlled fight, trying to pace himself a little bit. Prior, of course, has been the aggressor from the opening bell. Well, Aguayo, the, the way he's fighting now, he's concentrating. He's trying to figure out what should be more effective. You'll notice he'll go to the body on fire with that uh, left uppercut. Looks like Arguello is almost trying to measure Aaron Pryor. He's not fighting at long range, but by the same token, he's trying not to let Pryor get on top of him. Well, also, to... also, Barry, you see he'll start going low with his punches. Arguello will start throwing punches under. There was a good left hook by Arguello, but it did not hurt Pryor, who smiles back at him and takes the right hand from Arguello. Watch the right hand by Aguero. If he, if he has time to set it up, the crowd is in there. That missed. Link, the back. Referee Stanley Christodoulou breaking the two. Every time Aguero tries to set Pryor for a combination, Pryor has the ability to throw his rhythm off. Because he comes back with a series of his combinations. Pryor rarely will throw one punch, all in combinations, and that's the way it says. Right hand by Arguello, Pryor's not hurt, backs away from it. Pryor sticks a jab in the face of Arguello. Let's see, Arguello can't deal with a boxer. He has trouble with all boxers, and Pryor's doing the right thing now, side to side. At the bell. Pryor again rushing off the stool at Alexis Arguello. Arguello being told to keep the jab in his face. Swelling does not really look to be very much worse than it was when it happened in the second round. I see Pryor's back to boxing again. I, I think he realized that it gives uh, Arguello trouble. Lateral movement. Sticking left jab out, changing direction with the right hand. But he can't leave that left jab out too long. He can't float his punches. Long right hand. Pryor looks all business here. Well, he's very serious, Barry. In fact, both fighters are very serious. This fight had all the billings, of course. Brawler, boxer. Good versus evil. What it all comes down to is two guys in an 18-foot square. What Aaron Pryor needs to do now, because he's doing the same thing over, he's too repetitious in his, uh, in his style and his tactics. He needs to faint a little bit more. That was a little bit short. And that was not, that hurt Arguello. Arguello holds on here as Pryor forces the attack. That was a good right hand, that was a cut over Grillo's left eye, just above it. Now that could be a factor. That is in the area where the blood could get in the eye. So the cut alongside the left eye, and it's being looked box at on. by Stanley Christodoulou, who says box on. Again, I don't see this fight going on 10 rounds. These guys are throwing too much leather, and uh, it's gonna take his toe. It has to. That cut is alongside the eye, I believe, of Alexis Arguello, not above the eye. That right hand did not hurt Pryor. Pryor's making the mistake of letting that left jab float. That cut is actually above the left eye of Arguello, not alongside it, right? above the eye, toward the right side of the eye. Pryor is trying to work on that as much as he can. And a good right hand by Pryor. And the blood showing all around the eye of Arguello now. That's going to give him a lot of trouble. Arguello has been stopped on cuts once before. In his first loss, as a matter of fact. Oh. 
Well, the cut is a pretty nasty cut, and now I can't help but wonder if Arguello is not going to have to take the offense here. Well, unfortunately, but I didn't have a chance to uh, stop the bleeding. Well, Aaron Pryor is going to hop right back on him. Pryor has picked up the pace here without question. That leadoff right of Aaron Pryor is uh, confusing Aguayo because Pryor moved one way, then he stopped and released that overhand right and go the opposite way. He's not letting Alexis Aguayo get his punches off. The bleeding is not very bad right at the moment. The swelling is still under the eye as well. It's really impressive to see Aaron Pryor as a boxer. Pryor still pressing the action here. Has definitely picked up the tempo. As he knows his man's in trouble, an uppercut, he right back with the left hand. That was a beautiful combination. Right at the moment, Aaron Pryor is in control of this fight. You'll see Aaron Pryor come under with his punches. He throws the overhand right, then follows, follows that right hand with the straight left, uh, left jab. Arguello continuing to try to work on the eye, and it is bleeding again. There was a good right hand right on the eye. Arguello wants to get closer. He's, he's, all he's doing is stalking Pryor, trying to get close to him, trying to measure him, trying to time him for some particular punch. Bleeding is not appreciably worse here as Aguayo's corner actually did a pretty good job of that. He's taken a couple of punches on it. And it is bleeding a little bit, but it's not bleeding profusely. Well, the tables can be turned around if uh, Aguilo just picked the pace up now because Pry has slowed down tremendously than he did earlier. And that swelling under the eye is getting a little bit worse on Arguello as well. Arguello right at the moment, again, does not seem to have a lot of sting in his punches either. Well, he's fighting a bigger man, too. And there's the right hand, and that might have hurt Pryor. Arguello trying to follow it up, scores with another left hand, but Pryor not stepping back. Pryor does not seem hurt. But Pryor fights harder when he's hurt, as a matter of fact. Because though, that left hook and that right hand by Aguilo was a good, solid punch. Panama Lewis saying, don't fight his fight, fight your fight. He also said he's a blind fighter. I'm not sure that that's completely accurate. Pryor trying to pick it up here. You see there, Aaron Pryor gave a fan. It was very effective. Arguello still seemingly waiting for an opportunity against Pryor here. Pryor continues to work on the eye. Takes a left hand, but doesn't step back. The Pryor can't make too many of those mistakes. He has a very bad habit of just walking away from his uh, opponent. And with a fight like Aguero, you can't do that. Crowd really into this fight, as you can hear, very much in support of Alexis Aguero, who takes a combination from Aaron Pryor. I like the way Pryor is utilizing the whole ring. I mean, he's walking, he's stepping side to side, back and forth. The only thing I, don't, I dislike is the way he keeps his hand. He floats his punches out. Especially I left Jay. He's vulnerable, he's vulnerable for an overhand right. He is showing another whole side of him, though. He has not been completely the brawler in this fight. And he's fighting a very intelligent fight. And a combination scores again. Doesn't hurt Aguayo, but nonetheless. For the moment, that cut over Aguayo's eye is closed. Very few men can stand in the ring with uh, Aaron Proud. Pryor should change directions now. He's going the same, the same direction, and Aguero's going to find him out. A right hand missed. Yeah. 
Both defenses up. Referee Stanley Christodoulou warning Arguello, and between rounds, Panama Lewis went over to Christodoulou and said, tell him to keep his punches up. And Pryor tried to paw at the eye of Arguello. Watch what happens when Arguello goes to Aaron Pryor's body and then comes back with his head. Over, overhand right. Under 30 seconds remaining in the eighth round. Upstairs, just as you mentioned, Ray. And again, takes a warning for low blows. Aguayo is starting to time Pryor a little bit better at the end of the eighth round. Uh, just a little bit. Probably because Pryor was slowing up a little bit. Round nine. As long as Aaron Pryor is able to maintain his pace, um, it'd be quite difficult for Willow to figure him out. But once he slows down, Aguero comes on strong, gains momentum, and start working that body and, up and back to the head. Panama Lewis between rounds said to Aaron Pryor, when you get inside, duke him out. Well, Panama wants uh, Pryor inside to stay there, not to come out back outside. Inside, Pryor's able to keep those little short uppercuts. Pryor is inside now. Takes the right hand from Aguero. You see it happens every time, Barry. Every time Pryor comes, steps out, his hands are down, and Aguero lands. He connects with punches. Crowd comes alive now for Alexis Arguello. Prior fighting away from Cincinnati. Does not feel he's really being accepted by his hometown fans in Cincinnati, although he has no intention of moving. Thought about it for a while. Worked out in New York. Lived with a friend in New York. That was back when he couldn't get fights. I feel probably at this point now, Prior would do better by boxing. It's lateral movement. But he has to be doing something because it's difficult for Aguero to figure him out. Neither man has been down, and that will surprise a lot of ringside observers, myself included. Now, Pryor should get out of the corner and stay away from the ropes. There's a right hand that causes Pryor to take a step back. And another right hand by Arguello, but as you mentioned, right, Pryor always comes right back after a punch. After a big punch, Pryor comes right back. But the mistake he's making, Barry, he's stopping, he's slowing down. And Arguello, over, uh, underhand with that uppercut and an overhand right. And that cut over Arguello's eye has not been bleeding for the last two rounds. Pryor stand is too straight up. He's too erect for a fight of Arguello's caliber. a right hand by Arguello again, and Pryor now holds on for a moment. Someone may go down this round. If these guys stand toe-to-toe, -to -toe, someone will go down, I feel. And a combination, three-punch combination by Pryor, who's now right on top of Arguello. Arguello stays right there, and misses two shots of his own. Pryor lunges in with a right hand that's over the head of Arguello. Well, fortunately for both fighters, there's just a few seconds remaining. End of the ninth round, Larry. And that was a good round. The tempo was picked up once again. <laughs> We saw him. But take Larry Merchant's but word we for saw it. Him. They were there. We did see him. Tenth that was round. A, that was the second good round in a row for Aguayo. And that cut has not been a problem for him over the last couple rounds. There is the swelling under the eye, which does appear to be getting a little bit worse, but not in a position, at least at the moment, of causing him any problem. We talked earlier in the Howard Davis fight that maybe Howard Davis is not hungry enough. That is certainly not the case with Aaron Pryor, who still feels he owes something from the Olympic Games in 1976. He was the favorite to win the lightweight championship in the <laughs> Olympic Games, and he was beaten twice on split decisions, close decisions, by Howard Davis. Howard Davis fought for $250,000 in his first professional fight. Aaron Pryor fought for $400. He's been a hungry fighter ever since. And this is his biggest payday. I really felt that um, this fight wouldn't go beyond 10 rounds. 
But I have to say, I'm very impressed with both fighters because they're showing championship quality here. Now you cut that out or I'll send you away from the corner yet. Stanley Christodoulou warning Panama Lewis for coaching and warning him very vehemently. Larry Merchant has been scoring this fight. We'll talk a little bit toward the end of this round about just how Larry has it up to this point. I sense that... Uh, Uppercut by Arguello. It's kind of a kind of rock crop. The scene here with these two guys going at it, I, I look at the way I fought Tommy Hearns. This, if this fight should end any time, it's just a matter of who has the most heart. And neither of these fighters has ever been want for heart. Right now, the fight does not have a real rhythm. Nobody is in control right at the moment. It looked for a while as though Aaron Pryor would gain control, but he hasn't. Pryor's able to sneak right hand and follow that good left hook hand. But it's some of the sting has gone from both fighters' punches. Right hand by Aguayo made Pryor blink, and now there is a little bit of blood showing under the eye of Alexis Arguello. And the blood above the eye has not really shown. Pryor showing that sort of quasi-bolo punch that he says Sugar Ray Leonard stole from him. I stole from him. There's a right hand by Arguello. And a right hand by Pryor. I still have Pryor very, very slightly ahead in this fight. Five, four, and one. Coming to the 11th round, so it's an either way proposition as Larry Merchant sees it. All fights have an ebb and flow. I'm not sure this one really has. Pryor is the only one who at any time has shown like he was starting to dictate the tempo, but really that was for a short period of time. Other than that, it has been give and take. Good combination by Pryor. And Pryor right back on top of Arguello. The blood for the moment is stopped. Well, you know, they always, always respected Alex Arguello's uh, punching of uh, talent and skills. And now I'm quite sure they're going to appreciate and respect Aaron Price because he's displayed so much versatility in this ring. All right, better now, that's enough. Stanley Christodoulou continuing to talk to Pryor's corner. Pryor trying to work on the eye. There is no blood showing right at the moment. There's a right hand by Arguello. And Pryor backs up for the moment. And another right hand by Arguello. Pryor does not seem to be hurt. Arguello being very patient. He has not thought himself, I don't think, that he's hurt Pryor. Because he has not really come after it. As long as Aaron Pryor stands there for a while, then moves, you notice Arguello can get set. Pryor back with a combination of his own. Blood still is stopped. Now Pryor should walk away at this point here. Or at least he's got away from the ropes. Smart thing to do. Both men at this point look highly capable of going 15 rounds should it become necessary. Aguayo's trying to pick the pace up now. Aguayo misses a wild right hand. Aguayo's not missed a lot of punches. He's been thrifty with his punches. But Pryor did not take one step back. Tough kid. Those were some devastating punches by uh, Alex Aguayo. There's something this team has left Aguayo, because if not, I, 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 I feel Pryor would have been down. 
Pryor coming back with an attack of his own. Takes two more from Arguello. Pryor does not seem hurt. Combination by Arguello again. The uppercut and the overhand right. Back with another overhand right. Pryor smiles at him at the bell. There's a straight right hand earlier in the round. It was later in the round that Aguayo landed three or four of those, and let's take a look at him. A body shot followed by a right hand, under and over. That is a sign of a very great fighter. Both the thrower and the throwee. From here on, it's Let's just go, Let's go. conditioning on, and will. All right. As you see it now, the fight's dead even. It's just about dead even, yes. And the pace picking up considerably. Pryor off the stool and right in Alexis Arguello's lap. This fight is incredible. I mean, they, both men throwing bombs the whole time. Just make you glad you made the decision to play. I'm so happy I've retired. Pryor trying to go to the body. Left hand by Pryor. The eye of Arguello seems to be no worse over the last three rounds. Well, Aaron Pryor definitely needs to keep that pace going. As long as he slows down and falls asleep, Arguello is going to continue to connect with some uh, beautiful combinations like he did the last round. Pryor has been stepping up the pace a little bit in this round. Pryor with a combination. Arguello wobbles for a moment. Goes back against the ropes. I think that might have hurt him. And Arguello with a right hand. Pryor's legs wobble for a minute. Give and take from the very first round. It's unbelievable, Burr. These guys, I just can't. You know, I can't picture anyone being able to take those punches. Both these fighters in superb condition. Excellent fight. Uppercut by Arguello. That right hand missed. A right hand by Pryor, right on the eye of Arguello. He knows Arguello is now starting. He's doubling that right hand up. He goes to the body with it and comes back up to the head. He's changed up completely with that overhand right. Pryor lunges with that right, and Arguello missed the uppercut. Arguello is going to the body, so Aaron Pryor should go to the body. With the fight at, at this pace, those body shots really take his toll. The right hand was caught in the glove by, Argu by uh, Pryor. The left scored, the right on the glove. bit of blood showing once more from the eye of Arguello, but it is not any more of a problem now than it was four rounds ago. There's a right hand uppercut that caught Pryor leaning in, but again he didn't hurt him. And Pryor continues to work on the eye of Arguello. And another good right hand and a left hand. Pryor now had Arguello grabbing for a moment. Now, the bell did ring. As we mentioned, his bell is not very loud. Now, Pryor up off the stool. Incidentally, that was the first time between that rounds that I've seen Aaron Pryor draw a deep breath. Pryor forces the attack. This is the 13th round. It is still anybody's guess. Toe to toe. Nobody really doing much damage, but toe to toe slugging. Barry, notice uh, uh, Wales lady throws his left hand. I believe something's wrong with him. He's hitting open glove now. There's a right hand by Pryor, opens up Arguello for the moment. Pryor leaning into his man now. There's a right hand by Arguello and a left hand back. And Pryor seems to be just a step slow right now. 
Now you look at the way that Aguero is delivering those body shots. I believe a little bit of the starch has gone out of Aaron Pryor's legs. must have really trained for this fight. He's showing so much stamina here and endurance. Well, there always was some question as to just how much he did train for a fight. In this case, I don't think there's any question at all, win or lose. Well, he's really thickened also. There's a right hand, snaps the head back, and Pryor is hurt. That was the best punch of the fight. And I mean right on the button. That was like target practice. That was a beautiful right hand. I, <laughs> I mean, I just don't know how anybody else could stand up against that punch. And come Pryor back like right Pryor's doing. A punch a little bit low by Arguello, and it really just caught Pryor out of position. Pryor needs to get back inside. It's too dangerous on the outside. is throwing his punches a little bit. He's lunging a little bit now. I, I don't know that he's particularly physically tired, but I think his legs are a little bit shot. Oh, yes, he's taking some good shots. But again, Barry, you have to appreciate this man is in tip-top shape because Aguero has thrown some white right hands that would have knocked out anyone. And Prow also has landed some big punches on Aguero's chin that should have taken any man out. Aguero still trying to work, or rather Prior trying to work on the eye of Aguero. It's still swollen and a little bit of blood shows underneath the eye, but not so much above it. That was where it could cause him more problems. There's a good right hand by Pryor. Another tremendous round. Panama Lewis telling Aaron Pryor that he had to win these next two rounds. I'm not sure that that's completely accurate, but I would think it would be a pretty good idea. Aaron Pryor now in Never Never Land for him. He has never gone into the 14th round of any fight. Combination by Pryor. And a left hand snaps the head of Arguello back. Arguello is wobbling, breathing through his mouth. Pryor being patient. Right hand, that's one of those here it comes and it's still scored. Fire a left jab and a combination again. And Arguello's in trouble. Arguello in big trouble against the ropes. Fire going for the kill, trying to put him away. Arguello trying to cover up. A smashing right hand, Arguello's helpless against the ropes. Arguello's hands on his side, it's over. Aaron Pryor has retained his junior welterweight championship. Arguello slips to the canvas. What a victory for Aaron Pryor. Incredible, Barry. Never seen anything like that before. Just a tremendous victory. There is no taking anything away from either man. And you had to feel at some point somebody would fall. And Aaron Pryor was the man who made Alexis Arguello fall. Well, if there was any fight that would go down in history, it would be Aaron Pryor and Arguello. Arguello is still down on the canvas. His handler's administering to him now. And let's, here's a look at Alexis Arguello. His hands were down at his side, and Stanley Christodoulou wisely stopping the fight at the proper time. They will keep him down there, certainly as a precaution. Aaron Pryor was not over-exuberant with his punches. He threw the Thank punches you. when he had to, when he thought